these are diseases like they're infectious disease where you have resistance that develops and you're always having to, you know, it's like a whack-a-mole. You know, you're just constantly having to try and chop away. I think there are a lot of things to be encouraged about. I think, as Meg said, we have a very industry-friendly commissioner, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we have um, a, we're moving towards repeal of Obamacare. The market hates uncertainty. So irrespective of what the reform is, just to have that resolved and everyone knows the rules of the game. And, and the last thing I think, you know, I remember about two years ago I told you the biggest challenge I thought this industry faces with, faced was pricing. And what I think is really encouraging is that we're actually seeing grown-ups in the pharmaceutical industry partner with payers and develop responsible pricing models that are going to drive accessibility for patients okay, and so, so, rather so, than the he said she said and that could stave off the more draconian regulatory exactly. measures which would hurt uh, which innovation. are inevitable if this industry but it would continues hurt to be a we, bad actor yeah. we, we need them to be able to have flexibility with pricing to, to for the innovation that we're all craving that we all want absolutely but. um you know steve miller and bob ward the ceo of radius health were on here recently talking about this very issue and i remember reading i think it was re related to regeneron that steve miller said you know their investors would have wanted them to price higher we wanted to, them to price a little bit lower so probably that was the right price. So there's got to be a compromise that facilitates the continued investment and return that's required, but also that the system can afford and then patients can take their medications. Yeah, since EPO or NUPO at Amgen or, or some of the other, you know, multi-billion dollar biotech, biopharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. has there been a big one in the last, what's the biggest one in the last five years? In terms of you know, oncology, I mean, no, but you know, one yeah. biopharmaceutical that's at five billion a year in sales, something like a, you know, a, developed through biotechnology research. In the last five years, the biggest um, biologic be. drug has probably been Optivo, oh, Optivo which is a Bristol Myers that? drug for is cancer. That a, it's an immunotherapy. Yeah, immunotherapy. Is it so going to be immunotherapy that 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 we make? It, that seems slow. That if that's the way we're going. When, well, we gonna, again, when, I, when I, will I, we understand the molecular? basis uh, of cancer, the key thing that we need to reverse. Oh, that's, you know, way above my pay grade to answer that <laughs> question, because I think the people that are expert in the field couldn't answer that question. No, I know, or they'd because have everyone's it different on, and it's, you know, yeah. on the market, right? Um, but I do think, you know, we, we've seen tremendous innovation out of this industry over the last 10 years. The challenge is that they have to be priced such that they're affordable and they don't break the back of whether it be the consumer or the payer. And at some point, you know, there's not some endless pot of money. So, um, you know, the generic industry has facilitated headroom for the innovative new products. Um, we've seen biosimilars be very, very challenged to get to the market. It's not easy, and we've had one after the other disappointment there. So that just keeps getting put off. So hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.